you all for coming. Uh, today we're really delighted to have Mandy here along with us. Her work models was on view just a few months ago as part of the Istanbul Ardo in South Thailand post 1890 exhibition. And today Mandy is going to talk about her models. Thank you. This is all my Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, you have to give me just a little bit time to get used to you all, because today was my first proper day here, and I felt all very relaxed and looked at everything, and now I'm very nervous. So it takes a bit for me to, to, get, uh, to get into my own lecture. And one thing that they always ask you, if does it get better when you get old? No, it doesn't. You are still, uh, one is still as nervous as everything. But uh, I have found a way to, to give le lectures that suits me better. Um, and some, but it's a bit of improvisation. So sometimes, uh, so I cannot tell how it will be every time, because sometimes it, it does better, sometimes not so good. But um, you have artists whose work start somewhere and then they develop and they change and they develop into another area. And in the case with me, I think that um, that I, I don't really develop like this. I sort of go back like this and go back back and go back and go. So, um, so the lecture is also a bit like that. It's not really a lecture, but then the, um, the lecture is about just what that. It's filled with uh, things from different periods. So that also doesn't really go chronologically. Um, it starts with um, the work that was here, the models, and then it sort of goes back into a little bit of the past. Uh, I'll just, just quickly give you a bit that you know the structure of it. So what I will do is I will talk, um, I will talk over and uh, stop some images and talk with my own images. And there's also little bits of film from different years. For example, Rudolf who's working with me. He made the first film in 1988 for the television. An interview with me, you'll see a little bit of that in there. And then later in 1996, with a, a, a documentary, and there's bits and pieces of that also in the film. So in the end, um, in the end of this, going back to different parts, um, you you'll see the uh, once I made a book called Sweet Nothings, and then I also made a clip. So I have all these different bits and clips um, that are thrown together. And uh, I just wanted to go see. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll talk about the work models in the in the in that work, and then also I'll, I'll show you something about how one keeps one's uh, archive in a sense in relation to how other people does it, other artists, because I always like to explain myself in relation to other artists, because sometimes they say it better, so that I don't have to say it, and I can just say, yeah, yeah, that's all right. And, um, and okay, I'll, maybe I'll just start, and then I'll talk through it, and uh, and we have little bits of, uh, uh, okay, let's just my start, okay. Not very good at sitting still. I just, <laughs> Yeah, but it falls off if I walk. Oh my goodness gracious. Huh? I don't know if I stand up, I just want to. Maybe I should. I'm the fact that we stand with It's stupid. We have to. Um, we just have to get. Uh, um, okay, so. The. Um, this, this group of, of drawings called Models um, was started in 1994. And it is a, a mixture of, from different times actually also. Because this, because when people think of the term models, in our country mostly you think of fashion models and you think of the painters model. 
But um, um, for, for me, I never have a, I've never totally systematic. So if, uh, so when people write about it, they will say, okay, this is all women. But if it's a group of women, there will always almost be a man in it or something that breaks the pattern in a sense. And so in this group, um, it was the first time that I used a lot of different periods and different types of models together. For example, um, this uh, a portrait is, um, was inspired by a book about um, uh, how the insane was looked at in the 19th century and how photography was used to um, this was a very important book for, for me because um, here one could see how photography in a sense was uh, and still is, you know, we have a passport, but I, I'm still surprised that people think you look like your passport. But here you also had the fact of how with photography one tried to make certain types. For example, if a woman uh, didn't look after herself and her hair was too much, uh, um, you know, you had the Ophelia type, and you had all the different types of women. And um, so, so among the fashion models, the film stars and the other models, uh, I used a lot from that book as inspiration, and this was then another book from a much uh, later time where um, this was um, fashion models, but mostly androgynous types. So this is a boy looking like a girl, and, um, and some of you had girls looking like boys. And so this was also one of the models in that group. So I have um, anyway always been interested in what people think they can read in a face. Um, but unlike, unlike someone who works in the fashion, where they try to create a face of this time and then the face is out of fashion again, I am interested actually in all the different types of faces. In a sense, I'm there um, a bit like Andy Warhol, not in the making of, of uh, celebrities, but in the fact of, that um, everything is pretty. Yeah, that you, you this is a, a Rembrandt, uh, the model um, Rembrandt used a lot, his wife and uh, one of his other ladies. And I found it interesting that with, uh, yeah, you have Richard Bardell, um, with the watercolors, the flow of the water, because I work on the floor, this is now that shifting looking like Richard Bardell. I also like the fact how faces try to imitate other faces. The one model wants to look like the other model. And uh, so, um, yeah. Here we have, for example, in the same group, I also work with um, Peter Mabibani's work. And um, I only use close-ups. Um, and no. So the, the whole group is indeed mixed with different expressions also. And here, and it, um, we also have um, Simon de Beauvoir. Okay. So, so um, this thing of keeping images uh, and not using them sometimes immediately, that is also something that I do. But I don't, as I say, uh, I'm also not, uh, but I will never, I think, but I'll try until I die to have a systematic archive, but I keep on also having different categories. This is female, this is male, this is Jesus, that is porno, that is sex. And here in that first film, you see that much have changed there. I'm uh, also trying to show them um, uh, how, how I work and how the archive looks like. And the title comes from one of my first works. Um, this was the years that I was working with collage, and I um, was looking at how the wives of political um, 
all the political men, and they, for example, Malcolm X had just died, and his wife had to immediately talk to the press. I was very interested in the, the differences between um, the public and the private, and how, um, for, and for example, this is Lumumba's wife, and she was bare-breasted, um, because it was a sign of mourning after her husband was murdered. Um, so I was trying to, um, and then I'm telling them that in Dutch there, how I tried to um, uh, look at also the woman behind the men or next to the men, and how I, although I only painted tears, because they mentioned tears much, much later, because I thought this is a kitsch subject, it's too difficult, I don't know how you can actually make a painting of tears. No, we can't. <laughs> okay. I always get nervous uh, uh, trying to see how you use the same mannerisms trying to explain something. Um, so, for example, um, I also collected um, a woman who, who did political acts themselves. And, um, and uh, at this stage, for example, I only made uh, a small drawing. I also did not paint that subject matter. It also came back much later again. Uh, and uh, this was also in the 80s, where certain subject matters I only drew, more like comic strips almost, but I did not actually make paintings of it yet. Because I do see a big difference between a Does drawing and a painting. Oh. Um, and, uh, and this was also a picture that I kept for a very long long time in my studio. I never used it directly. And here is a, a painting of 2008, uh, where I, um, and my mother died in 2007. And I tried to make sort of paintings about grief, but I used the film stars because I also um, so my mother was a jolly person and she wouldn't like it if I make two pathetic uh, works. And she always said there's a time to learn and time to die. So I was sad that she wasn't there anymore. But uh, so, yeah, so in a sense I've often used emotional, personal things in my life, but then used a different form to, so I made a series of different film stars that were crying. So it's the combination of distancing yourself and uh, being emotional. Um, I used, um, this, this was when, now we've gone back in time again, this was when I tried to go from the collages to his photographs. Um, this was called Victoria Falls and the story came from a newspaper that lovers often went for a holiday to the Victoria Falls and then they quarrel there and then in this case the one fell in and died and the other one didn't. So, um, so, so that was the subject matter. I always was interested a lot in the crimes of passion. And this is my archive. And uh, you see, so, so, so I'm telling them that this is my archive. In the, and that was my studio at the time. And my studio actually still looks a bit like this. Now there's just more uh, boxes and more things like that and more newspapers on the ground. But it's still, um, here it looks quite older, but it isn't so. Now, the, the, you have the subject matter models, but you also have the different type of photographs you use, and that also affects the, the, the style of the paintings. In the 70s and 80s, I, uh, I, in South Africa at art school in the 70s, I got my first Polaroid, and I really liked the Polaroid, because the Polaroid uh, had this, um, this was the photographs I took of uh, um, people who was at art school with me. And, um, and they, I did not make paintings of them at that stage, but so many years later, it's interesting to see that I already then had this tendency. I, I actually never um, took a photograph of anything else with a human being at that stage. 
and it wasn't because I wanted to necessarily use it for art. That was, and I, I love the fact how the the Polaroid could I could zoom in, and this was also uh, from my a collection of my art school days. And um, much later, here's an example of this uh, the Polaroid, and uh, this was then uh, a Polaroid of the. Um, painting I tried to make and this I always called a bit my pop art painting because uh, and later it uh, it got strange uh, histories a bit like the Hans Harker upstairs because Mr. Satcher once bought it and then it got, got a whole auction history which is a whole different story. This is my friend Barbara Blue, Blue an artist which I um, I got, in the 80s then I used friends and I used them to display um, uh, um, other aspects, so it's a part of themselves but it's also part of something else because um, she was then used in a portrait called the Jewish girl and she was Jewish uh, herself but um, she also didn't have this she almost looked like Anna Frank in, in, this, uh, in this painting. So in 84, 85, I made my first exhibition of the lesbian, yeah, I am, and, uh, and this was the end of a relationship, me and my, my friend. So uh, that's boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. And I tried to see, I wanted to be like the movies. I thought, how can you paint the end of a relationship? Because movies do it. And so then he, he wasn't really, didn't like me so much then. <laughs> but then it's okay now. But uh, so it was called the space age. And he also likes things about space, but I, I often make word jumps, so I thought um, about space between people, space between relationships. And so I was talking about that time. I said, I don't actually paint portraits as. I paint the spaces between people. That's what I thought I did. I don't know if I did. But um, I never really did much projects um, outside my own work. This was a project that I did take on. It was in a psychiatric institute in Holland. And um, I worked with the people there, and, um, but only the ones that could speak. So I made Polaroids with them. and. Um, and then I made a group of portraits, and it is still in that film. And it was made to, to this is where they, uh, they spoke, and this is from, uh, extract from the film. So some of them is uh, flights, and some of them are actually therapists. Because I am a woman, it's a logical necessity. If painting is female and insanity is a female malady, then all women painters are mad and all male painters are women. This was a text because people always, there's also humor in my text because people would always ask me, you know, how is it to, to be a, a, a woman painter in a man's world, etc. So I thought I will answer that in a much more humoristic or turn it around and say that. So, but that was a text that has been used often and people sometimes say, what did you mean and so but I was actually asked to act on being a woman, so I thought, okay, you know, um, let's then do it because you're a woman and not in spite of. Uh, here, this section, you'll see then, there was the use of the snapshots, which was um, that friends took, especially of my daughter, for example, and of uh, other. Um, which was not made also for artistic purposes in the first place and, uh, and which I used in my work. And, uh, so, um, this was, um, this work was called The First People and um, after her birth, she was born in April 19, 
98. Um, so, but here again, uh, like this tree is her, and then we've got one boy in there, another friend's uh, child. And what I found very interesting is that uh, this is a very uh, important uh, snapshot. This was taken in South Africa, the backyard of my mother. And can we hold it one bit? Yeah, 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 just hold it a bit. And um, this was a picture I, that stayed in my studio also for a very long time. Because I saw it here is a painting in this picture. But what was very uh, wonderful of the real event, she was actually painting. And I was talking to somebody else, and I wasn't looking at what she was doing. And then when I turned around, there she was, and uh, instead of painting on the paper, she started, she, she had painted herself. And she, she stood there like that. And uh, it, it was a beautiful <laughs> moment. And, um, and it made me think also of this thing of, supposedly primitive people paint themselves and you know what what is this uh, and and what type of painting would I want to make out of this and um, so I did, didn't quite know what I wanted to do with this uh, snapshot but it was in my studio for quite a few years actually before I used it um, to make this painting um, called The Painter, and, um, and this is one of my favorite paintings because um, this, this painting has also been written um, uh, in all kinds of ways. People interpret it in very many ways, and sometimes they say, you know, that is me, and it's guilt, and it's blood on the hands, and it's all these things. But what I like about the fact is that this um, this image, taken out of the context, um, um, has become something else. And in a sense, instead of having all the male painters of the old days, when they paint soft portraits, they stand there with the brush and they paint their model. This was in the sense, it was the model, but it was also the paint. It's almost like an outer ego. It's a female. Um, and it is, it's not quite me, but it's the daughter. And um, and you can uh, the painting in the real has got a, the, um, it doesn't reproduce well because in the real it's got a greenish face much more greener which gives it a better eerie quality so so the painting has become a thing in itself so I don't know it's, I mean all it, it can take on all kinds of meanings but what I like about it that as a thing as a um, as a painting, it has got its own presence. So, and it's also, it's got a strange coldness, which I also like. So, the, the temperature of the painting is a mixture of, of um, it's warm, but it's also cold, and I like, I like that. Um, so, I mean, I didn't try to paint a horror painting, also didn't try to paint a too soon. You see, here's a different period. <laughs> Um, I, uh, but I find, should we tell the owner of this painting, but I don't think this painting is as good as the one before. Uh, but this is just among us. But you see, so I tried to make a different version where she's much older, and I tried to use uh, certain aspects, but uh, it's, it's okay, but it, it doesn't help. I also very much believe in chance, in where, uh, or not only chance, but you can sometimes take exactly the same subject matter almost and and the and the things doesn't come together in the same way and it is less um, this um yeah um this was an example of a work where the which there's a, a lot of narrative in it because if one knows the story snow white and the um uh, snow white and the seven walls and um, but here I, I use sort of a, first I use that of a Polaroid of myself and then and then I I, I wanted to, to I've always wanted to paint a wedding dress because I because I wanted to be like the last girl so I, I wanted excuse to have a lot of just going like that 
but uh, never quite thought. So she had a dress on first, but that didn't work either because I wasn't. I didn't have a good enough reason in this. So this was a painting that went through many. This is here, with you. It's a good formula. Yeah. So so I'm trying to explain here uh, about the fact that uh, so in in this painting, because people always say, you know, I work for photographs. I do. But uh, things can go their own way. For example, I, I took, she didn't have a dress on, I put the dress on, I took the dress off. I took, I put in the dwarfs, I took them away. I didn't, uh, she had an apple, I thought that was silly. She got the Polaroid camera. And um, so sometimes uh, um, it can go through a whole lot of different stages. And um, I've been there uh, in this little film, and I say I think it's also a bit like that, that you, have this, uh, this, in a sense it's a secret and it's not, or um, that I, I started to, from the 80s, try to always write uh, um, parallel texts to exhibitions. So I always wrote my own little text about the things that was uh, keeping me busy at that time and what I thought was was the sort of intention and what the work was doing at that stage. And, uh, and I didn't want a nude, I wanted a naked body, you know. So it was all also this thing of, of uh, trying to redefine yourself. This, uh, here you see, um, here um, I used the black in this sense to, um, not to make a, a black person in that sense, but to, to um, I wanted a figure that was not so much female um, that, or all male, but a figure line on, on this uh, structure. And at that stage I was very much busy also of how can you use the, the female nude? Is it possible? It has been used for so many things. And, and um, so, so here it wasn't to do with the I got it from a nudist book. It wasn't to do with the source anymore. It was to do with what can a painting be. Here, um, you, um, we have to, in, in 2007, I said I had my retrospective for the first time in South Africa after all these years. And this is how, there's Table Mountain, and this is the museum. And this was the only museum also we had in South Africa. And uh, and so it, it was also quite emotional, apart from the fact that I always thought I would go back to South Africa. Um, and then I stayed longer and longer. And um, when being back in South Africa, I also looked at lots of the source material that I still kept there, and some which I didn't use and that I struggled with. Here, um, this is a mother whose son has been uh, uh, is a criminal and has been executed. So uh, I um, okay. see this was, for example, also a painting that I struggled with a lot. I don't think I actually pulled it uh, off in the sense of there's a difference between an ambiguous image that is full with layers and an image that is unclear, maybe. And I, I don't, uh, maybe the subject matter was too difficult for me. I'm not sure, but, but um, I always then um, indeed trying to, um, this, for example, is a, a image that I did use. Um, but I uh, use it in a totally different way because you never really see a role of, um, of naked boys. And the photographer who did this painting, he was, um, he asked to be invited at a ritual for circumcision. But there was a very, uh, many uh, discussions if it, we should have shown it and shouldn't have. So it was a whole political question in South Africa. But I, I used it in a different way, and uh, and I sort of extended the, um, the the painting in this way, and um, yeah, and this is just called young boys, and 
Um, okay. Yeah, in, uh, when I was in South Africa, I found, um, I mean, I go there regularly because I went through my old boxes and things there. And then I realized that I kept, the year I left South Africa to study further, because I had a scholarship, was in 1976. Uh, yeah, and this was the year where um, all the, the children was being shot, and I never painted it then. I, I kept these pictures, but I found it uh, too upsetting to work with, and at that stage I wasn't really working so figuratively. Either. But here in 1983 in Holland, I for the first time painted this man called uh, Dead Man, and, and and later I painted this image. And um, and I in my catalog for South Africa, I said that maybe I paint the dead now because I couldn't paint them then. And sometimes, um, okay, I mustn't explain too much because I'll explain it later. Then um, uh, there's a Dutch photographer and, and uh, at Van Denden, and he made a book where he um, took uh, pictures of all the um, posters at the, um, in that region. And uh, at that stage, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't use any of this directly, but in South Africa, <coughs> South Africa, sorry, but living in um, Holland, in Holland, when I, the Holland that I came to in 1976 was a much more tolerant place, and um, in the Holland of the of the years now has a lot of things have changed, and. Um, so I was looking also at the pictures of uh, these young people and anyway the fact of uh, maybe also, especially also being a mother and you, you look at youth and uh, it's often that the youth, they have, uh, die in all these wars and, but it was again, this, this group was a mixture of, of people, of also sometimes um, of people we knew on the streets of uh, Amsterdam. So, and um, and this is called Young and um, and this uh, okay. Mushekwa, this was a friend, uh, or is a friend, Mushekwa Langa, a black artist, young artist, um, living in Amsterdam. And uh, here is an example when you see the, the source I used to make his painting of, where he himself made a joke on how people see uh, he gave me this uh, once as a present because he felt that he was so discriminated and not uh, gay, and so he made a joke in a sense on that situation. And. Uh, so, I mean, but all these things one can say, talk of the long things. But here I tried to say something about this in a lecture that I gave in Chicago. Um, and I thought I wouldn't be there. So I thought I would just have this lecture of me talking. And then I did go in the end. And I was very nervous hearing myself talk like that. And that was the first time that I actually, I sat in front of it and I kept on remarking on myself. I the exhibition time and again, and why I called it time and again, because it seems, especially with uh, painting, but with life in general, I think too, let's talk about painting a bit now, that one's certain type of subject matter Although the historical circumstances are different, they seem to keep on reoccurring. So that is also why it's so difficult to explain exactly where a work comes from and what it means, because it doesn't only come from the year and the now. It often comes from a very long time ago when you keep on seeing how someone um, struggles with 
with certain type of subject matter. Okay. Um, this series is very well done. Oh. He always says this to the last one, but I don't know. And we have a blind side. So we we'll put a bit of it in. And then we execute it. Now we are in the year 2003 already. And I have used these images as inspiration. And they are from March 2002. And you will see, for example, that this man in the back, and, and this man here also, which is not in the front of the picture, they are later seen in this group called blindfolded. But as I yeah, um, try to explain all the time, Apart from the fact that it is related to the real events, you see the big, the blindfolded figure pops up in other works of mine in earlier periods. In 1993, I did an exhibition in Belgium with Frank de Mar called Give the People What They Want. And there it was not these men. But uh, the young girl who played the main part in the exhibition, and uh, this, these, um, these paintings, they are very small paintings, because this is other thing, size is also very important, but okay. Um, this one is called Equality, this one was called Justice, and this one was called Liberty. And, um, Later, I did a work in which um, a tapestry was made for the court in Den Bosch in Holland. And I wanted to use this little figure of justice. And, um, and then there was problems because, and I'll, I'll read you a little text that I wrote about that, that this figure had all kinds of problems because it's uh, even on the whole paintings, you can have a naked lady with bare breasts standing as an allegory for justice. Now it looks like child abuse. Um, and then that's straight from a text, because I called my work The Benefit of the Doubt. Or, now that the blindfolded ladies with bare breasts and swords don't stand for justice no more, who can we trust that does, Your Honor? And uh, this is also an example. There was two carpets made because it was done uh, with machines. It wasn't hand woven and. Uh, Second, uh, wall, uh, the Canadian, okay. like this wall, African stone, also, sorry, one in Holland and one in South Africa, um, of the same uh, pattern. Yes, I'm not going to analyze the differences between the medium, because this uh, is more to do with theatre and photography, but also with the use of blood. Why I'm saying that is, for example, I never thought I was going to paint with blood. In this work, which is for me a very important work called Dead Girl, I for the first time in a painting actually did work with, um, and do say also in a formal way with the different types of red, for example. While in my older books I would uh, not do that. Um, the source where it came from, this um, picture, I have kept for a very long time. Um, Jack also writes about that. Here you see um, a companion in the hijacking of uh, those times. Um, here at the back, you see his body. Uh, 
And this is a party that I never do again, but sometimes you have certain periods in your life where you, you know, I mean, it's still where you have to do something, but it always scares me. And here you can see the feel of it, all these greens and everything is of a whole different order than so many years later in the power. This work for me relates also to the final series of um, Richter. I mean, when I made it, I didn't make it for Richter, but then later I take distance and I think, okay, how does it relate? It's going to be this combination of the two and the problems between the two and the transfer between the two can deny Richter. Richter has been obviously one of the most important people in this area. And here, he, he calls this, in the, this is by the, this by the mind of series, but he calls it dead. And this is done um, also in the 80s. I mean, so this is one of the most important series when people discuss uh, who has tried to paint the historical situation and it's about painting, it's also about death and it's about the relationship between photography and painting. So this director um, cannot be not looked at in this context. And in the longer versions that I had, his whole archive also, which is so very different also from my archive, because it's extremely systematic. So, um, I said, I also try to see myself as a patient of one's time. I also try to understand why I do certain things and how they differ from someone else who do something maybe similar, but uh, for a different reason. And, uh, and so this was uh, my female version. Um, and on a formal level, also after having always had uh, people look at you, and then uh, at a certain and being frontal. So th this was from Caravaggio, he's Santa Lucia. And um, so I then looked at sort of female martyrs in a sense. And, uh, and at that stage, I tried to make the paintings as simple as possible. That is, this is female skull, and um, and this was the only female I had in this other group called Mankind. And then, uh, then we almost finished it for uh, for a little while with all the with all these men, because I uh, there was a time when people said to me, "Why do you only paint women?" And I say, I can't paint everything at the same time. So, I mean, I have now painted men, women, old, young. Um, and this was the guy who made the two from folk. That was a, uh, and in a sense, I often paint things that, that upsets me or, or makes me nervous. So, in a sense, I didn't really want to paint him. But um, at that stage, it was the only sort of uh, thing that, that really was so important all around, and uh, so I did make a painting of him called The Neighbor. And then, then uh, I was also intrigued by uh, my different versions of uh, the line, because I, um, I found the image that was used often not so much like the Jesus image, because there's many images of him, but um, so in, in a sense, you have almost like the publicity photograph of, of him. So, um, in, so in a show that I had, uh, this was a second version, and then there were, I had Jesus is in it, and I also had, uh, this is the son of that one is called, and this was his, his son. So I would think also a lot about um, what is one's fate, and if you're the son of, this is my brother, in the Jesus series, I also use other people, just like in the model series, so in the Jesus, I 
I mean, we can see someone that we don't know if he exists at all, but, but there's so many images of him, so there is no real original source to copy. So you copy, in a sense, the sources of others. So I put my brother in there, and uh, I put Francis Bacon in there. And this was one of the first series where I specifically concentrated on the model that... Um, Coming later. Oh, I am. Oh, I'm missing. I'm missing something. Uh, I'm, I'm missing the strippers. Because I wanted to give you some relief from all this. Because uh, I didn't bring the porn on, and I didn't bring the. Uh, I did have the strippers. I don't know what happened to that. Uh, it's his fault. You see, I will just have to come again if you still. Uh, and we do it a more erotic. <laughs> but I bet so, so we don't have the erotics, we have all the sad things today. Um, but, okay, so but that we, we can't tell about everything. Okay, this was, um, 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 this, I said, this is all a bit to all the depressing subject matter. Um, and this was a photograph uh, in the newspaper. With the newspaper photographs are basically Dutch newspaper photographs. And here, this was, um, it looks as if this uh, Orthodox Jewish people were standing in front of the wailing wall if you didn't, uh, you know, really look at it properly. And it, so it was a strange photograph because they were preparing at the other wall to get um, ready to go somewhere else. So, um, so it was the first time that as a subject matter, although I've got also lots of pictures of, uh, that I've kept, as I say, um, I've never used this as a subject matter, but because this uh, photograph had this very double um, I, um there's also a catalog in which I explain I talk more about it, but so this was the type of photographs that I then had collected and this was the first time where I really painted without having figures in it and where the, where the, um, all the intensity was just in, um, in the wall. And this was also pictures of, um, uh, also that I, I never really you um, never you still only now. And this was the exhibition, so you have the different walls um, of um, people being captured uh, at uh, the wedding wall, and then you have the other wedding wall people standing there. And so, um, so this was the exhibition against the wall. And here you see, the, uh, here I brought in this little uh, girl. Um, and the source, there was more people in it. This called the mother. So in a sense, the thing of the uh, of the motherhood. So I don't pay babies anymore. But I wondered if if I have a, um, um, if being a mother does affect one more that you do. I wouldn't have said that so many years ago, but now I think that gives apart from the um, political. Uh, um, conflict, also the, the other, the, the human aspect of um, the, the mothers and the children and the sons, uh, that made a big problem in this. This was called Mind Blocks, and here I, I just threw all my paint also on, um, on top of the floor, I worked on the floor for these works. And this is the last work in this series called Wall by Night. And um, uh, so, so this this is the end of all this, the wall as a not such a nice model. And this this is at least this was the end of the film that we made.
Nielsen, Mannen maken geschiedenis, vrouwen autobiografieën. Nee, het zijn niet allemaal zelf te treken. Nee, het is niet altijd mijn dochter. Nee, ik heb een gelukkig in die tijd gehad. Nee, ik ging nooit in therapie. Nee, ik ging nooit de gezinsdirecteur zijn. Ja, ik vind mensen niet en tijd het moeilijkste wat er is en niet goed voor in een vrouw met creativiteit. Ja, ik vind dat ik aan mezelf het beste model voor de kwade heb. That's the right word either, but I um, I see uh, paintings uh, as flat things in a sense. So so the work is not as realistic as it looks like. There is a lot of there is this illusionism, but there's also a lot of flatness, and the photograph is already flat. So I want to say something about the world or about the relationship, but in a sense, even though I use a lot of bodies, I'm I'm not really interested in how someone looks like, if they've got a long nose or a, you know, a long something else or, or tall or short or so. So, um, yeah, so in that sense, I like the fact that the, 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 uh, um, the artist on the shooter once said, uh, he asked him, you know, because he doesn't do his models. Uh, I mean, he used to sometimes use uh, live models and not anymore. And, and he said, yeah, well, if you use a live model, uh, you fall in love, maybe. And, that, and then you forget that you are already married. And he said, so Marlene maybe uses it to protect herself. And I thought it was very sweet. But in a sense, I want to be alone in my studio. Uh, and uh, so I don't really like all these people there. So I think more about all these issues and, and also with, uh, with the nude or the more of erotic or the pornography. It's a bit like using a stand in, in a film. You know, maybe you want to say something about an erotic relationship that you had uh, or, or thoughts that you had about it, but instead of having this person sitting there, I mean, because that's not... Anyway, so, so that's not what I want. I don't, I want, yeah, so I, I like it. Uh, maybe, maybe, I said lots of things that I said I never do, I did do. So, but I don't know if I've got that much time to totally change. People always say, so good, you haven't changed. I, I, sometimes, but I think it's a pity, it's difficult to really, really change. So I don't know if I will change that aspect, but as a child also, I always do. And I could do that, just draw very quickly sort of cartoon, sexy cartoon uh, girls. So I would draw it on people's uh, cigarette boxes that came and visited the family. So that's why they thought I was an artist. 
But uh, I mean, I wasn't doing so much. I could, I was squeak and I could do that. And um, yeah, so but I never really do from nature anyway. It make I am I don't have that patience because I'm as I say, if I see something beautiful in nature, I don't have the uh, desire to want to capture that. So I I think yeah. Yes. Yeah, I have a question I was going to ask you about nature, yeah. fascination people, Yeah, I find a, a beautiful nature always makes me a bit melancholic and sad. I, I, um, I really, uh, you know, the hugeness of everything um, is, uh, you know, is, is wonderful. But I, I don't know what I want to do with that. Because it is human relationships that interest me as an artist. Um, oh, see, he's going to put in the last appears. Yeah, it's quick. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, this is strippers. <laughs> produces beauty, she produces meaning, but I say, one cannot paint a picture or make an image of a woman and not deal with the concept of beauty. At the moment, my art is situated between the pornographic tendency to reveal everything and the erotic inclination to hide what it's all about. The painting is the secret. The painting is not a pervert with a raincoat. It turns its back on you and minds its own business. That, that was, for example, a, a project which was also very difficult because I did it with the photographer Anton Gombein and uh, I took Polaroids uh, of the people dancing and stripping and my Polaroids, I think, uh, were sometimes better than their paintings because the striptease was about movement and that's another thing I think that for me as a painter uh, certain things is better in other mediums, like foam is beautiful for movement. So if a strip teaser moves, and in a sense, you know, um, yeah, so, so sometimes you can take a subject which is not so good for you as a painter. Maybe somebody else can do it, but I, so, but you learn from taking on certain things that, um, so it was a very interesting uh, experience as a person on, um, to be with the ladies and to be, um, but as a painter it was difficult to do. Because I tend to, you know, also work with film skills, I thought that it is still already. I think if I had a model, if I see her, I talk to the model all the time. I don't think I will. I will get down to, to draw at all. I will not think I will. Thank you for the talk. Uh, before all, uh, I'd like to say um, I took a course uh, when I was an uh, Erasmus student in Bremen University. Um, from uh, Professor Wolfgang Ruprecht um, and it was a uh, watercolor uh, working uh, and I worked on your uh, watercolor paintings uh, very much so uh, I'm very glad to see you here. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to, uh, um, I want to comment uh, uh, on your, uh, you know, uh, painting style uh, as you show us uh, the, the so-called real uh, photographs uh, behind those uh, paintings, but uh, when I see your works, uh, especially watercolors, um, I see um, a transgender body, uh, not exactly a woman, a man, or both man and woman, or nothing, or an animal, anything. 
against the subject matter, but, but I mean, indeed, there's a different movement. Yeah? He paints the, the, the figure, in that case, the woman did, and then, and then he sort of seems to go like that, yeah? or is he just got this movement? But, uh, but in my uh, works, and you can't see that well on reproductions. So in reproductions, they become, they start to indeed look like photographs again, often, lots of them. And that is indeed not so so good, actually. I find my lots of my books also very ugly. I admit. I mean, because then you, you can't capture <coughs> so well how the um, because the for, for example, for me, it's very important even in the paintings. Although I might know such a point that the watercolor goes like that, but even in the paintings, indeed, which way. Do, does the movement go, and how fast or how slow is something? I once tried to copy one of my own paintings, just for interest's sake. And uh, what I found in the copying of, I could make it look like the painting, but I couldn't copy the speed. I couldn't, because uh, I don't know where I started, I don't know any more than, you know, but it is in a painting. I think that is why a lot of copies is always so dead. Because you can copy a likeness, but you cannot copy. I mean, it is done. It's done with, with uh, your body, in a sense, and with so, 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 so that is also in a painting. I feel. I mean, if you make a choice, say like like uh, uh, Jeff Koons or people who don't want the hand in that way in it, that that's also okay. But then you get a different type of movement of fear. But, but in a sense, I'm an old-fashioned painter, in a sense. Uh, I, I still like to have a difference if you're close or if you're far away, in the better words, I hope. Is that your answer? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, what was the question, sir? Question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I asked uh, what her views are about uh, on photography today. <laughs> well, well, in in a sense, I um, I think the more, um, I I still like uh, uh, yeah, it sounds a bit silly, but uh, but I like documentary photographs. So I mean, I I still like something. To, uh, I mean the, you know, when indeed the fact that amateur people can make photographs that's meaningful and uh, you know just like TV, as I say, I don't like TV all the time. But if there's a war on, I don't want to stand and paint there. You know, you want you want an image first. And if I look at it in that sense, but now then then um, you know, so every medium. Um, does things a bit different again, like the Polaroid. I was interested to see how the, the colors of the Polaroid seem to influence my earlier portraits, which had much more color in it. And since I used, yeah, but that's not, I must get back to your question. It is a bit related in some, but I find it, um, yeah, yeah, how can I say? Yeah, maybe you should help me. What do you think? Then <laughs> 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 um, no, no, I just because I, I also said to somebody that I don't really think I improve a photograph. The 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 um, South African man he's also more doc documentary photography, you could say since but David Goldblatt, the South African photographer, he he once said to me, Oh, you know, but in, in a nice way but he said, you know, all these painters who use photographers, uh, you know, photographs, and they don't acknowledge it and all that. He said once, he, uh, one of his first very important books in South Africa was called On the Mines, and he indeed went down in the mines and all that. And apparently some painter, I don't know who, once then made a painting of that work. And, and he said, well, you know, he never in those days got any I mean, money or recognition really for his work much. And this person's painting was hanging in the office of somebody and got much more money. But not so much the thing of the money, but in, indeed sometimes it seems as if when painters use it, they, they feel they are improving a photograph or something. And that, that is not at all um, my, 
attitude towards photography. I said, I have uh, also, I find press photographers fantastic that they, that, you know, the, the difference of, a, uh, of that type of photography, that you have to be there. I mean, I'm not there, I'm in the studio, so I sort of reflect on all these things, but I'm, uh, so, so that type of photography, and then, I mean, it's got so many uses, uh, and, and so. So, um, but I, but I do find the difference also with still with photography as a medium that you can look at it in a book. I find, but well, you can't look so well at a painting in a book. And again, not because I think painting is, a, but that is the nature of the painting is that it is a physical object. And and I am. Yeah, so I, I like photography. I like the, all the fact that you can make it bigger, smaller, and so. But uh, yes, I uh, quite answer your question. <laughs> but you know, I, I want to say, like with Gilbert and George, for example, when I also enjoy so much about them, on the one hand, they can order the things like that because they're not really painters. So, I mean, they use photography and they make sort of. I mean, they make art of it, but they, uh, um, in that sense, I mean, I still like the thing of chance, and as I say, and of the, the physical uh, mistakes that happen. And, and with painting, even if you have a photograph, there is actually nothing on that canvas. You, you, you start, in a sense, with nothing. Maybe I should start more with more nothing, but but I mean, um, yeah. So the difference is is, is huge still, I think. And, but yeah, is there is there photography that you think of now that you feel otherwise you call that? Or what? I think I should ask the question. Can you please speak to the microphone? Um, I, you know, if I can beat myself, but, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I ask questions because I'm kind of confused about photography myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just that, you know, I, as a photographer, I'm more interested in my optics these days than I am in my uh, work, you know, you know, whether it's commercial or whatever. And, um, um, you know, that's why I probably ask the question. But, uh, but I think it's exciting. It's not exciting. I am a little tired of photography prescribing me mm -hmm. and coming up with projects and you know and not really having spontaneous flow anymore. And then just look to so many projects, you know, projects. Thank you. 